-hmm. All right, yeah, so that's me. And uh, I looked at uh, our release process and the way we shadow releases. And well, essentially only the way we shadow releases. And I think we should do this totally different. Did, did I get your attention? <laughs> All right, no, I looked at them and um, just reconsidered if there's uh, anything we should do different. And I didn't find anything, but um, yes, I look, I'm looking for feedback. I'm just walking through all the things and uh, all the, the release points and maybe um, explain a bit how some, some pieces of the sausage machine uh, work together and why some releases are in which, uh, uh, at which point in time. So who in the audience had Never, had, had ever committed to LibreOffice, has a commit in LibreOffice. Okay, so for the other half, the one who ever had, did a commit in LibreOffice, I'm sure wondered what will be the next release where my, my fix or my patch is in. So um, for the others, um, this is uh, uh, exactly explaining uh, the, the part that these guys probably did when they uh, when they looked at the release plan to find out when the fix will be released. So this is uh, how LibreOffice releases. It's obvious, huh? <coughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, uh, maybe I should explain that a little bit more. But uh, roughly, this is one year of LibreOffice. And the piece in the middle is the master branch where uh, we are doing all the main work and uh, uh, breaking stuff and creating new features and uh, do exciting things. And essentially, there are like four main points. That is, uh, we have a release in summer and we have a release in winter. And we are starting to cool off breaking things for summer in May. And we start to stop breaking things for winter in November. And then there are two other points, that, which are the alpha releases, which are uh, also tagged and where you, which you can download and then see uh, what the state is in between these releases to give you a feel, because otherwise you would be like six months without ever seeing anything of the change, except if you would download daily builds. So this is the cycle, um, which is, well, where essentially all the main work happens. And then I said, well, we are cooling things off a bit. And let's look at this. Uh, for example, for the winter release, we are then branching off to a different branch. Um, and stuff is happening slower there. And this branch is roughly living for about a year in total. Um, so it's 11 months in, uh, in existence. So if you look at the first release of a major version, like 5.0.0, um, this is essentially what happens. In, in winter, we had the 4.0 being branched off, and all the work that was only done here is the only stuff that goes into the new release. And then in, cal in calendar week, this is uh, the better one, um, we are branching off. This is the end of November. Uh, we might have a better two around uh, early, um, early December. <clears throat> and then in the first years of, uh, uh, first weeks of, of uh, the new year, we have the first release candidates. And those are the first ones, this is important, that are built as a release configuration. That was important for the last rele winter release, because actually we had a bug that only showed up in a release configuration. And we couldn't possibly find it before uh, actually uh, doing a release configuration. So it's important to have those uh, builds there too. And then at some point, we have the final release, and we release uh, at the end of January. And you see the distances are almost always mm -hmm like two weeks between these uh, points, so there's always some time between them. So this is the first major release starting, and, and all this change goes in essentially from this point 
until we have the first release. And while this is happening, uh, this is also going on. The work is already going on for the next bug fix release. And those are these. Um, so we have bug fix releases scheduled in, in uh, certain time steps. And the distance is, um, is, the first one is very quick, as you can see because we find a lot of bugs early on and we fix, try to fix them and get them to, uh, to use us quickly. And the last one is quite a large um, uh, distance. It's uh, 12 weeks. But even 12 weeks is, um, enough, uh, is, is just small enough that uh, if there is some, uh, some tricky security thing, for example, or something which is really, we should really be fixing, we, in most cases, don't have to uh, do some spe special work and uh, do an extra release or something. Because we can release it on time according to the release schedule. And uh, each of these um, are branched off in the second branch, like the first one. And, uh, the release candidate one that you sometimes see the announcement is essentially done on the date of the branch off. And the release candidate two is two weeks later, and the final release is another week later. So that means the whole thing from here, uh, from here to here is essentially three weeks. So I talked about these uh, different branches, and like stuff here is going on manually, and people are doing exciting stuff. And then we, then I said we would do cool things off here, and even more here. And uh, all that happens is we are using reviews. That is, um, you're always committing your stuff on master with very few exceptions. And if there's something important to be in a bug fix release, you ask it to be backported to this release branch. And for that, you need one reviewer. And uh, if you want to have it, this, since we had on this branch, like three weeks to, to the final, you get get it in in the, in the next release that is happening here. And if you really want to have it in the next release that is maybe in two weeks, you actually have to get three reviewers to review your code. And uh, I don't think we win much. I mean, we don't find many bugs by that. Someone reviewing this and is saying, this is all wrong. But there are two things that are happening. Um, First of all, people are not putting high-risk stuff in there. And the other thing is, um, well, developers don't like to do this. So uh, you really wonder, is, is this that important that I go through this annoying process? Um, and some things are, and others are not. Um, so one thing that happens, especially early on in the release, is uh, that we have regressions, especially on a new major release, and we want to fix them. And as I told you, these, these uh, release candidates and betas are roughly two weeks apart from each other. And um, if you have three in a row, that means they are four weeks apart. What this means is that there are roughly two weeks for uh, QA team and testers can find bugs, and then we have two weeks to fix them um, for the next release. One could wonder, uh, shouldn't we just make this longer and not release this one because the fix is not in there? Well, what would happen then is people would find bugs all the time, and we would fix them. It could, we couldn't, can't fix all the bugs discovered in the last week, and then we would never release if we always would wait. So this is why we have this uh, 
this two week uh, cadence of uh, RCs and betters coming up to a release. So what does this actually mean for if you're committing your stuff? Uh, when will it be in the release? Well, if you're committing it on master, depends. Um, it's between two months and uh, eight months. If you're committing here, right before the beta is, uh, is branched off, then it's two months until the release. For example, for winter, that would be if you're in late November and you're putting your change in and it goes into the next release, it will be released at the end of uh, January, just before Fostum, or roughly. So this is the ideal case to get your fix in quickly on master. If you are unlucky and you are just after branch off you, and, and you do that in June, well, it will take quite some time to the next release. So this is... Um, essentially the range, what happens on master. Which is why for critical bug fixes, you want to have them uh, backported from here to there or something. So um, if you do that, the, the range is uh, three weeks to two months. And if you have a real important fix that needs to go, go in, in the next release, absolutely, then uh, it's between one week and uh, three weeks. Oops. And then the final thing is, uh, why are we not doing this like endless D and forever and do uh, TDF LTS releases uh, till five years or something? Well, the reason is this thing is turning very quickly and stuff is changing a lot there. So if you take something after this has turned five times and try to backport it to somewhere over there, the stuff is looking very different. And at least volunteers will not want to do this work. So you have to pay. Information or support from the lot of five minutes. Therefore, it will not be possible to help all personnel. Men du er velkommen til at blive i huset indtil kl. 21. Thanks. <laughs> so, um, if you want to have that, uh, there are offers from Collabor, Red Hat, um, Debian does this. and the support issues are closing in 15 minutes. You are welcome to remain in the building until 9 p.m. Yeah. Um, so comments, remarks. Uh, Clough, did I do anything wrong with this? <laughs> Opinions. Yes. Yeah. There's a talk on Friday morning, as I heard about <laughs> changing at least that one. Okay, we will see that. I hope you will draw that. I will try to. Make it, yes. Other comments? Do you know, uh, comparison against, for example, uh, I don't keep that close track, comparison against uh, Firefox and Mozilla or other, or uh, Eclipse, do you have any idea how long their cycles are and things like that? Uh, Mozilla changed completely, and I think they have like month or week cycles now, so it's uh, r rather quick compared to us. So I know one distro that does releases every six months. <laughs> you might have heard of it, but um, yeah. Yeah. I, have, have, I haven't looked at that too much. Um, but I think we are, in general, with, with this, we are already rather slow compared to other projects. Uh, so with the major releases, the distance of six months is actually quite a large one if you compare it to other projects. And you, my opinion is it makes no sense at all to make it bigger, just as a thought experiment, because once you do that and release only once a year, 
that means that we uh, that we that the testers and the people the power users uh, are not looking at the product for one year and then uh, they are looking at it and everything is broken and we have to fix a lot of stuff at the same time. As one LibreOffice committer once said, um, I'm only working on the code, I'm not using it. That, that sometimes happens when you have a code base this big and so many features as LibreOffice does. Um, not every developer can, can possibly have knowledge about all the, the use cases uh, of the product. So. It's good to have, I think the, the, the six month thing is, is essentially the limit which we can run. We, we can leave master unattended to developers after. <laughs> Other comments? Yes? Um, do you have any statistics or this gut feeling? How much do we backport to the lower branches? Because at least for me, each time um, one of my bugs is getting fixed, I try to make sure it goes to all relevant branches. Yeah. So at least the, the already released version, if it's possible to the other ones, because some of the distributions still use it. Yeah. So um, I don't have uh, hard statistics, but uh, from the gut feeling, like after uh, these branches are very low volume. There's not m m very much going on there. These triple reviewed ones, they are like maybe a handful, 10 to 20 or something, e e e even if. And the other ones, uh, you can see actually from the, um, from the release notes of the updates, and they roughly contain a, around 100 bug fixes each. So you have six updates. Um, so that's, that's essentially your number. So at the end, you have uh, of, of one of these, uh, when, when the TDF version goes out of support, you have roughly 600 bug fixes on it. That's roughly what I would imagine to be an estimate. Other comments? All right, thank you.